Welcome to the Unapologetic Mompreneur, the podcast for mums with an online business who are ready to take back their time, home, business and self so they can restore the balance and thrive both at home and at work without feeling like they have to choose between the two. I'm your host, Sarah Dew, life and biz coach for mumpreneurs. I'm also a mum, stepmom, wife, introvert, breast cancer survivor and your mentor for making a change for the better. I've learned how to go from surviving to thriving and unapologetically create a business I love and the life I want for me and my family without worrying about what other people think. And now I'm here to help you do the same. Because being an unapologetic mumpreneur doesn't mean that we're selfish or that we don't care about others. It simply means that we are not afraid to show up as our true authentic selves, to step into our purpose, do what we know is right for ourselves and the ones we love, and take the steps we need to take to make our dream life and business a reality. Join me each week where I'll be sharing all of my best tips and strategies, plus the occasional dose of tough but gentle love to help you feel empowered, motivated and confident to take action so that you can become the mum, wife, biz owner and woman you know you are meant and deserve to be. So are you ready to unapologetically create a business and life you love? Let's do this. Hey there, and welcome to episode 25 of the Unapologetic Mumpreneur podcast. This episode is the third part of a four-part mini-series where we are diving deep into the four pillars to creating a business and life you love. These four pillars are the foundation of my business, and they are also the four pillars that I take my one-on-one coaching clients through and I personally use to help me go from surviving to thriving in my mumpreneur journey and they can totally help you do the same because when you focus on and you nurture these four pillars, they are the key and the secret to you thriving both at home and at work without feeling like you have to choose between the two whilst unapologetically creating the life that you want for you and your family without worrying about what other people think. I have been road testing and trying and refining these four pillars for the best part of the last 10 years now. And I have learned that every single aspect of our life, whether it is our business, our home, spending quality time with our kids, filling our cup too, all of those things all fit under those pillars. And when we focus on and nurture them, that is what helps us going from surviving to thriving and creating a family life and a business life that we love. And so this mini series, we are diving deep into each of those pillars. If you haven't checked them out yet, episode 23, we dive into pillar one, which is the love yourself pillar. If you are struggling to make your well-being a priority or you feel guilty about putting yourself first, that episode is for you because everything starts and ends with us. We cannot take care of the ones we love, including our businesses, if we are not filling our cups too. And so that is why we always start, and I always start with my clients with pillar number one of love yourself, because everything starts and ends with us. So in episode 23, that is the one that we kicked off this four-part mini series with, and I am diving deep into some simple strategies that you can adopt to help you start making your well-being a priority and putting yourself first every single day without feeling guilty about it. And then in the last episode, episode 24, we dove deep into pillar number two, the love your family pillar. And so if you're not feeling as connected to your kids right now as you would like, or you are struggling to make quality time a priority with your kids, that episode is for you. Because in that one, I've shared a few simple strategies again that you can use to claw back some time to make home life easier to manage so that you have more time to spend with your kids and how to make spending quality time a priority and letting the little things go so that you can feel more connected to your kids, so that you feel more connected to your spouse, so that there are less arguments and that family life becomes less stressful and more enjoyable. And in this episode, we are diving deep into the love your home pillar. We're going to be talking and I'm going to be showing some simple strategies all about how to make your house a home and to make it a true reflection of who you are as a family. So are you ready to start nurturing your love your home pillar? 
let's dive in. Our homes are our sanctuary. They are a place of security, comfort, and joy. They are the place we come home to at the end of the day. But sometimes it can be hard to love the place we call home. Maybe the area you live in isn't quite right or your neighbours aren't that easy to get along with. Perhaps you just crave a little bit more space. Whatever the reason, it can be tough being happy in a place that doesn't feel like home. So how do we nurture this pillar? How do we make the best of where we live, whatever our situation might be? How do we make our house a home and how do we make it a true reflection of who we really are as a family? Here are the five steps that you can take to kickstart nurturing your love your home pillar. Step number one is to be thankful for the four walls that you have. Just like in the last episode where I talked about appreciating the family life you already have, it goes the same with nurturing the love your home pillar of being thankful for the four walls that you have. It might sound like an obvious step, but we can spend so much time thinking about what we don't have that we forget that we already have a lot to be thankful for. When we look at our homes with a glass half empty attitude, we see dirt, mess, bad decor, peeling paint, grubby marks all up the walls, small rooms and a lack of space. But when we view it from a glass half full perspective, we will see instantly that our four walls keep us safe, warm and dry. We see a bed with a cosy duvet that we get to snuggle under every night, a sofa where we get to watch movies together on the weekends, and a kitchen where we are able to cook fresh hot meals for our family every evening. When we compare our homes to the perfectly furnished, perfectly decorated, clean and tidy, pinworthy homes that we see on Pinterest and in magazines, that can leave us feeling like our homes aren't good enough. Those perfectly staged sets designed by interior designers and photographed by professional photographers can make us feel envious about all of the things that we don't have and they can make us long for something better. But guess what? That is exactly what they are designed to do. Those images are meant to make us want more and they are meant to make us wish that we had better. They are designed to make us to want to buy their products. Our homes might not look like page 34 of their latest catalogue, but that doesn't mean that we should love it any less. It is so easy to focus on the negatives when things aren't quite how we would like them to be. To focus on the things that we dislike and the things that we wish we could change. Seeing past what needs fixing and just enjoying the home we live in isn't easy, especially if we don't have the time to do the work needed, budgets are tight or we aren't great with DIY. You might not like the wallpaper in your lounge. You might get frustrated over there being one bathroom between four people. And it might bug you that you don't have enough outside space for your kids to play. But they are all minor issues in the grand scheme of things. Maybe at some point you'll be able to paint or repaper your lounge. One bathroom is manageable if you get up early enough and take it in turns. And if your kids don't have enough space to run around, there's always the park or your local soft play. It might sound a little tough, but we actually need very little in order to survive and be comfortable. If we have roof over our heads, somewhere to sleep, food on our table, clothes in our wardrobe, central heating, a TV, a phone, and maybe even an internet connection, we are already a lot better off than many, many other people, and anything else is a bonus. If you are feeling low about the home that you live in, Spend some time writing down everything you are thankful for and everything you love about the space you have. Go from room to room, stand in each one and take a moment to appreciate your surroundings. Seek out the things that you like and the things that make you smile and make a mental note of them. It could be the colour of your curtains, a funky mirror, a shelf with ornaments that bring back happy memories of holidays or a picture hanging on your wall. Ask yourself when you first moved in what it was that made you say yes to that property, whether it was renting or it was your first home that you were buying or you've moved home. What was it that drew you to that space that you love that made you go, yes, this is it for now. This is the place. Make a list of those things and then try asking your kids what they love about their home too, because they may surprise you with what they come up. Kids need a whole lot less to be satisfied and their innocent eyes and simpler view of the world can open our eyes to things that we may have missed or that we are taking for granted without even realising. 
I've done this exercise with Harrison and I've been amazed by some of the things that he comes up with. And it really is as simple as things of having the sofa to sit on and have Saturday morning snuggles and having a bed that I can snuggle up with him and read a bedtime story. It's just amazing the things that our kids come up with. And if you're still finding it really hard to look past those four walls and finding a few things that you love about your home, especially if it's somewhere that you had to move to throughout no choice or, or of your own, then ask yourself what the space brings to you. What are you able to do as a family? Does it mean that the kitchen is a space that you get to have breakfast together or sit and have dinner together in the evenings? Is it, you know, they've got their own bedroom so that they're able to sit and snuggle and do bedtime stories and you can play on the floor with them? Ask yourself what that four walls and that space allows you to do as a family. Make that list of all of the things that you are already thankful for of your own home and your four walls. And then anytime you're feeling frustrated by your surroundings, repeat the exercise or read through what you've written down. It really does instantly make you feel happier about the four walls that you live in. Strategy number two is to claim your home as your own, because whether you are planning or moving sometime soon or you're staying there for the long haul, when you decorate and furnish your home like you are intending to stay put really does help you to claim it as your own and it completely changes the way that you feel about it. It makes you feel like you own it. And it reflects who you are. And if you do those things, it means that you are more likely to love it. Claiming your home as your own is a huge step towards nurturing this love your home pillar. And it's what turns your house into a home. You don't have to make huge changes that cost the earth. I'm not suggesting here now that you just start from scratch and throw everything out, start again and redecorate the house from top to bottom. You don't need to do that to claim the home as your own. Sometimes the smallest changes can make the biggest impact. You would be amazed by some of the few small, simple additions you can make that make all of the difference. It could be painting the walls in colours you love. It could be adding and updating the photos of you and your family, of putting up pictures that you and your kids, that your kids have drawn for you, displaying quotes that motivate or inspire, having your favourite ornaments out on display, making your garden a spot to chill out in. Often just the simple act of putting up photos of you and your family is enough to bring a little bit of life into your home. A few simple frames here and there can do the job, but also if you have space, a gallery wall is even better. Then the hardest part is choosing what pictures to put in them. A really cost-effective way to freshen up your home and claim it as your own is to give every room a fresh coat of paint in a neutral colour. Then you can bring themes and colour and cosiness into each room through the colour and style of your curtains, cushions, pictures and the decorative accessories. And then anytime you're feeling bored with the look, you can swap items from room to room and instantly give your home a new look without having to decorate all over again. We did this when we first moved into the house that we're in now and we'd moved from one county to another and we didn't have a lot of funds to play with. So that is what we did. And then we were able to just move stuff around anytime. And it was a really cost-effective way of freshening up and helping us to claim a home as our own without having to spend a fortune doing it. Go from room to room and ask yourself what you could do to claim your home as your own. Make each room a true reflection of you and your family, bring life into rooms with color and items that mean something to you. And you really will feel like your home is your own. It can be a really fun project to do and get your kids involved as well. Ask them what they would like to do. Let them help choose plants and pictures and things that are that they enjoy as well. And it will be amazed at how much easier it is to nurture this pillar and to love your home more when you have claimed it as your own. Strategy number three, step number three is to give each room a purpose. Think about how you use your home. Does every room have a purpose? And is each room being used to its full potential or has it just become a dumping ground for clutter? It's so easy to start using the corner of a room or indeed a whole room as a place to store things that you don't know where to put anywhere else. But clutter can breed so fast. And before you know it, your spare room is to fall to the rafters with a ton of stuff that you have no idea what to do with. You may feel like you don't have enough space to live in, but it could just be that you've not yet given each room a proper purpose. Are you making the most of the space that you have? Spend a few moments mentally walking around your home and think about how you're using each room. What is its purpose? Is it being used for its full potential? Could it better serve you and your family if you've used it in a different way? And could you solve any space issues that you might have by giving rooms a dual purpose? 
For instance, does the spare bedroom really need to be a permanent guest room or could you double it up as a home office and a guest room? Do your kids really need their own bedroom each or could they share and could you use the other room for another purpose? No space for a dining room but have a conservatory? Use the conservatory as your dining room instead of a second lounge or playroom for the kids. And speaking of playrooms, do your kids really need one? Could they have their toys in their bedrooms, giving you another room to use for something else? And if they have far too many toys, maybe it's time for a declutter. If you are tight on space and you feel like you don't have the space, ask yourself if your rooms can be used and have dual purposes. Our spare bedroom has been used for so many different things when we since we've moved in. And there was a time where it actually had three purposes. First, it was the room that I used as my office. So I had my desk in there. It then acted as a den for the boys so that if they had friends over, it had a TV and a DVD and a sofa in there. But third, it was also a sofa that was a sofa bed. So whenever friends and family came to stay, because we were in a different county to where a lot of our family and friends are, they had somewhere to stay. That one room gave us three extra rooms that we didn't have before. We had a spare bedroom for friends and family to stay. There was a den and somewhere so the boys could go and watch TV with their friends without us losing the lounge. And it was an office for me so that I had somewhere to work on my business. That one room, it gave us three extra spaces that we didn't have before. There was no need for us to move anywhere else. And it really has grown with us and it's changed its uses over the years. So have a look at what you can do in your house and ask yourself if every single room has a proper purpose. Giving rooms a dual purpose is a good compromise between what you currently have and what you would like in an ideal world. Giving each room a purpose and if needed, a dual purpose works. And not only does your home become flexible to your needs, it has the potential to grow and change with you and it will make it feel like it's bigger space too. Strategy number four is to give your home some TLC. Giving your home a bit of a TLC can really help you to love the environment you live in that little bit more. There are so many ways that you can do this, but the best way to make it feel fresh and clean is to give it a really deep clean. And by deep clean, I mean all of the things that you wouldn't normally do when you're doing the usual weekly housework routine. All the cleaning jobs that you wish you had time to do, but don't always get around to doing. All of the cleaning jobs where you think to yourself, I really must do that at some point. Jobs like washing the windows, dusting the light fittings, vacuuming under the sofas, cleaning down the skirting boards, clearing out the fridge, giving the oven a really good scrub and cleaning and dusting the top of the wardrobes. It is amazing how refreshed you can make your home feel just by cleaning all of the areas that you don't normally get a chance to clean. Ask yourself what areas of your home you could do with a deep clean. Make a list, get them done, and then repeat your deep clean at least once a quarter or more frequently if you can. Not only will your house feel fresher and lighter, you will feel much fresher and lighter too. And if you have an outdoor space, don't forget to give that a regular clean and tidy too. Sweeping the path and pulling up the weeds, picking up the leaves, mowing the lawn and giving your fence panels a coat of paint can make a massive difference to how you feel about your home. Giving your house a deep clean inside and out is a great way to give it some TLC and make you feel a whole lot better about the place you call home. But don't stop there. There are many other inexpensive and relatively easy improvements that you can do to make your home feel like new again and make your house feel like a home. Improvements like updating the pictures in your picture frames, giving your cupboards and drawers new handles and knobs, replacing outdated light fittings and light switches, cleaning up or replacing your lime scaled covered taps with shiny new ones, regrouting your floor and tiles on the walls, giving your walls a fresh coat of paint, giving your skirting boards a fresh coat of paint and carrying out all those little maintenance jobs that have been driving you crazy. Taking a little time to update your home's fixtures and fittings is a really easy and super simple way to make your space feel like new. Whether it is switching up the handles of your doors and cupboards and your drawers, replacing the taps or refreshing your door furniture, changes such as these bring a whole new lease of life to your home. And as for those little maintenance jobs that you know you need to do that are driving you crazy, the ones that you need to do but keep putting off because it feels like too much hard work, just get them done. It's tempting to keep putting them off, I know, but you'll feel so much better when you have them done and I promise you that you'll love your home a whole lot more. My favorite way of doing this is to make a snagging list. Grabbing a piece of paper and go from room to room and have a separate piece of paper for each room if you want to and write down everything that's bugging you, frustrating you, annoying you about each room that you need to do and fix. 
write down all the DIY and repair jobs you need to do, the areas that you need to touch up with a paintbrush, spaces you want to declutter, and make a list. And then grab some highlighters, highlight the ones in all, in one color that are all of those five minute quick jobs that you can get done. And then the ones that need to be taken a little bit longer. When you've done that, don't feel overwhelmed by the list. The list isn't there to make you feel overwhelmed and put you off. But you now have a list that you can follow over the coming weeks and months where you can set aside some time each weekend and just do something from that list. And before you know it, you will have done all of the snagging that you need to do around your home and you would have breathed new life into it and it will feel so much better. And then my final tip, number five, strategy number five is to make sure that everything has a proper place. We all have those drawers and cupboards that become catch-all areas, a place where we stash all kinds of random things because we don't know where else to put them. Every home has at least one of them. And guaranteed right now, you are thinking of and you know exactly where your catch-all area is. Me personally, I have a drawer in the kitchen and the cupboard under the stairs, and they both drive me nuts. Sometimes it can be hard to throw things away and we think that we should hang on to something just in case, but those just in case moments are so dangerous. They usually result in us hanging on to a ton of crap that we don't really need and our homes very quickly become cluttered and full of things that don't have a proper home and that we'll probably never really use, but we don't know where to put them and we don't have the heart to throw them away. I know exactly what this is like. At least once a month, I clean out my cupboard under the stairs and no sooner have I cleared it out, it is a giant mess again. There are a few things in there that I just, that I need, but I just don't have anywhere else to put them. So I just have to accept that every few weeks it needs a tidy up and a sort out. In an ideal world, I'd have space somewhere else to store those things, but that's not possible right now. And so I make the use of the understairs cupboard, knowing that it is just going to get in a mess and I just need to clean it out. If like me, that is something that you struggle with and you have that catch-all area, try if you can to get rid of it, to remove the temptation of stashing things in there by not even having it in the first place, if you can, and go through everything that is in there and ask yourself whether what is in it is essential. If it's not, throw it away. And then when you do go to file something in that drawer or cupboard, ask yourself where its proper home is. If you can't answer that question, there is a good chance that you don't need it. So give yourself permission to throw it away. And then whenever you're going through and clearing out that catch-all area, ask yourself where the item's proper home should be. And if you can, and there isn't one already, create it. Making sure everything has a proper place is key if you want to keep your home clean, tidy, and free of clutter. Try to make sure that everything you own has a proper home. And whenever you buy something new, ask yourself where you are going to store it. If you don't have the answer, it's a good indicator that you could probably do without it. So give yourself permission to not buy it. So that is the final strategy for nurturing the Love Your Home pillar of making sure that everything has a proper place. So let's do a quick recap and go through all five again. Strategy number one is to appreciate the four walls that you already have. Take some time to make a list and go from room to room and jot down or a mental note of everything that you love about each room in your home and what the space in your home allows you to do as a family. And then if you like, ask your kids too. Ask them what they love about the home and make a list of that. And then any time that you are feeling frustrated by the four walls and the space that you have, go back through that list and just remind yourself that you already have so much to be thankful for. Tip number two is to claim your home as your own. Whether you are staying for the long haul or are only there for a few more months, treat it as if you are staying put permanently. Do what you can to claim things as your own so that you make your house feel like a home and make it feel like that it is the home for you. When you feel like you own it and it reflects who you are, you are far more likely to love it. And remember, it doesn't have to be huge changes that cost the earth. It could just be putting up pictures that your kids have done, adding photos of you and your family, having some favorite ornaments out on display and painting the walls in colors that you love. Tip number three is to give each room a purpose, to make sure that every room has a proper purpose and that it's being used to its full potential and that it hasn't become a dumping ground for clutter. And then if you're tied on space, asking how you can use your rooms and create and give them a dual purpose so that not only does your home become flexible to your needs, but it also feels bigger too. Strategy number four was to give your home some TLC. 
go ahead and give it that deep clean that it really needs. The areas that you don't normally touch on that you know that you need to do at some point. And then go and make that snagging list and make a list of all of the little DIY jobs and maintenance jobs and bits and pieces that you need to do in each room so that you can make it feel like it's brand new again. And then finally, strategy number five was to make sure that everything has a proper place. Every time you're going to stash something somewhere, ask yourself where its real proper home is. And if you can't answer that question, ask whether you can create a proper home for it. And if not, and you can't think of where to put it, to give yourself permission to throw it out if you probably don't need it. So there you have it. Those are the five strategies and the five tips that will help you to dive in and nurture that love your home pillar. Implement these and you will be amazed at just how much it turns your house into a home and how much more it becomes a true reflection of you and your family. And that no matter what situation you are in right now with your home, that it is claiming it as your own and that you can fall in love with it all over again. I would love to know what your biggest takeaway from this one is and diving deep into this pillar, which one of these strategies you are going to try first. Send me a DM over on Instagram at the Unapologetic Mumpreneur and I will see you in the next episode where we are going to dive deep into this final fourth pillar of Love Your Business. If you are ready to ditch all of the needs and shoulds and all the noise out there telling you how to run your business so that you can reclaim your power and design your business in a way that feels right for you, you are going to want to check out that episode and I will see you there. Thanks for listening and bye for now. Thank you so much for joining me for another installment of the Unapologetic Mumpreneur podcast. If you like what you heard, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. And if you have a moment, I would love for you to leave me a rating and a review so that other mumpreneurs can find this podcast too. Here's to unapologetically becoming the mum, wife, biz owner and woman you know you are meant and deserve to be. I can't wait to chat with you in the next episode. Bye for now.